Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this video, diving into Cohere's new Command R Plus large language model. This large language model is unlike anything that's come before it because of its specialization in retrieval augmented generation or grounding generated answers on your information documents that it's retrieved or say that you've given it like chat with PDF or vector database, RAG and all these kind of applications. So there are all sorts of exciting things to this new announcement of Command R Plus, Command R, I love the naming already, how it draws from that command F to look for keywords on say some text, now command R to have this language model read the text and discuss it with you. And so there's just so much exciting things to this from the 128,000 input window to the multilingual support, tool use, these super cool uh, human preference evaluation of summarization with citations, as well as the CRM example of more complex real world tool use of having the language model go through a CRM and you know populate schedule meetings, update information, all this kind of future looking stuff. So we're gonna kick off this video by looking at a DSPy demo, showing you how you can instantly use Command R Plus in your applications with DSPy, and then we'll look at the release post and some details of that. We'll kick it off by showing you how you can get started building applications with DSPy, Cohere's Command R Plus large language model, and Weaviate. This is the latest addition to our Weaviate recipes collection. You can find this linked in the description of the video or Weaviate slash recipes slash integration slash DSPy slash LLMs slash command R plus. And I know this is quite nested in the folder, but there are all sorts of collections in this recipes repository from showing Weaviate's modules and then all sorts of different additional features of Weaviate as well as integrations with say Llama Index, Langchain, Unstructured, Ragus, U, all the big collection of these. So I'm so excited to be adding this to this repository and continuing to build this repository. So please check it out if, if you're interested as well as of course for the example for this notebook. So to kick it off, to use the new command R plus model in DSPy, you use dspy.co here, pass in the model name, the maximum number of tokens you'd like, and your API key. So here's a quick example. Generally, I really like to you know, take the LLM and then say, say hello or something like that to just quickly make sure that it's connected. But let's quickly motivate this retrieval augmented generation uh, use case. So we're gonna be having initial instructions like assess the context and answer the question or answer the question based on the following context. And then we'll provide some sort of context that helps the large language models answer these questions. So. I love this example of software documentation as software you know, tools continually add new features. And so these large language models, they're not gonna be continually you know, training on the new information as if I have to motivate the retrieval augmented generation use case. But the, the idea here is that you retrieve this information and then it, that's what the large language model will use to answer these questions. So you're saying, you know, can I use binary quantization in Weaviate? And it's got this information of the latest features released in the latest Weaviate software release. So then it can then answer, yes, binary quantization is available in Weaviate 124, blah, blah, blah. So continuing on with the demo. So we're going to be connecting to Weaviate to be using as our retrieval source. So in this example that I'm using, I have the 80 blog posts that have been written from the Weaviate team that we chunk up into 1,200 text chunks. So I just, I've been loving playing with this data set because there are blog posts about like, you know, lock striping patterns and then case studies say with moon sift and then say you have, you know, rag evaluation. There's so many different topics in these blog posts. So it's been such a fun example to be asking questions about like what is product quantization or what is asynchronous indexing or, you know, how does Weaviate on Kubernetes work and watch how it retrieves and answers these questions. It's really pretty remarkable. So let's dive into this new idea of long context rag. So what we're doing here is we're retrieving 10 search results from the Weavia blog post index. So you see search result one. So again, this is, this is just kind of like naive chunking of the markdown of the blog post, but we see the first search result. Then we have the second search result. Then we have the third search result that con contains a GraphQL snippet and then, you know, the fourth and so on. So you see like when we are able to increase the K of retrieval, and if we don't have this lost in the middle problem, if these language models are able to attend to all this context, and that's, you know, that's what I think is so exciting as we'll dive into the blog post and the announcement is, you know, Cohere, they have this focus on retrieval augmented generation. Their, their models are fine tuned for tool use and it's kind of like search as a tool and having documents as a special parameter. So th this is certainly an exciting direction for the future of retrieval augmented generation and grounding LLM predictions on some kind of context, whether that be, you know, your CRM as we'll see in a second with the blog announcement or say just kind of, you know, indexes of information. Like this could be your emails from last month or Slack messages, all sorts of things like this. Okay. so. The next thing you do is you configure this large language model and the retrieval model so that DSPy will use these as the, as the default. 
Then we're gonna generate a RAG program. So we have our signature, generate answer. We give it a task description, assess the context and answer the question. Then we give it two input fields, context and question. With context, we additionally provide a description, helpful information for answering the question, and then a detailed answer, a detailed answer that is supported by the context. Then we create our RAG program where we give it in the retriever and the generate answer. And hopefully from this and seeing, you know, DSPy videos and stuff like that, you're starting to, or, you know, in general, <laughs> like you particularly, but generally we're seeing this DSPy, PyTorch sort of syntax where you first initialize the modules and then you define the logic of the forward pass. That's this analogy of DSPy and PyTorch for thinking about building AI systems. So then we connect the context that we get from the retrieval and then we pass in the context to our generate answer as well as the question. And then we return a DSPy prediction where we return these fields. And the reason we do this is so that we can access them in our metrics. But we can also just have dot answer when all we want is one prediction at query time. So we say, how does HNSW vector search work? And what it does is that's the question in the forward pass. And then we context help that retrieve with that question. How does HNSW vector search work? Then we get the context and we pass it in alongside the question. And then it you know passes it into this prompt and we get the answer from command r plus let's dive into the announcement of command r plus command r plus is the latest model in the series of command r models the command r analogy is just amazing for communicating this idea of retrieval augmented generation and large language models that have custom training to ground their answers based on retrieved context or documents so command R, it paints that analogy similar to control F or command F, how you'd look for you know, keywords in a PDF or a web page, code base, things like this. And now command R to help bring that connection home of what this new technology is doing and some of the specializations they've taken. But as we'll see, there's all sorts of interesting uh, generality in this command R plus model. So right out of the gate, introducing command R plus, a scalable LLM for built for business, they get right to maybe one of the most interesting developments we're seeing with new large language models, which is longer input windows, a 128,000 token context window. So maybe for some, some context for this, when the large language model API kind of hype and development started beginning, we mostly had 4,000 tokens in our input which meant that our retrieval had to be super precise. You could only really fit, say, two or three uh, retrieve contexts. Usually you would chunk up text such that each chunk is 500 tokens. And so you can only really have two or three of these in addition to the instructions for the task and things like this. So now our ability to have retrieval augmented generation at each different component and LLM systems and kind of going even deeper than just chatbots and adding retrieval, adding additional context to just everything it does from reading or writing to our CRM or processing uh, meeting transcriptions and just all these kind of applications that we're seeing with large language models. So. I love this sentence, advanced retrieval augmented generation with citation to reduce hallucinations. This is such an exciting new feature from Cohere in the first of its kind that we're seeing. We saw, of course, the, the JSON function calling where we've seen you know, OpenAI, AnyScale, and Cohere as well. Most of the LLM providers have this kind of JSON function calling, but we didn't have this explicit kind of uh, citations to the retrieved context from the tool. So. Cohere has specialized their models to be able to do this, and it's an optional argument in their API to provide key value documents to unlock this citation feature. The next key feature of Command R Plus is Cohere's multilingual support. Cohere has been kind of the industry leader in multilingual. They had this amazing large language model called AYA, which is a research study across hundreds of languages. And generally they have a, just a super talented team for this. So they're presenting 10 key languages of the performance of Command R+, and they also describe how their, their tokenizer saves you a ton of tokens for multilingual support, particularly compared to other LLM providers. And then last up, tool use. So tool use is a super exciting development for large language models. This is where you give them a set of tools that they can use like say a calculator or something that they can call to check your emails and things like this and so they're going to provide this example with crms to see how it can read and write to crms by using this uh, tool use function calling one of the most exciting developments in ai and large language models so diving right in uh, we see some things like the kind of enterprise ai readiness of cohere and how they have integrations with say microsoft azure or oracle cloud infrastructure and then we get uh, a chart in the middle showing some instant comparisons of command r plus with some of the other heavyweights in the large language model space like gpt4 and mistral large so this is showing uh, blue is a, is a score used for n-gram overlap between translations. So say you have some kind of uh, human ground truth, human written ground truth of a translation from say English to French, and then you're counting how many of the keywords overlap. There's like, it's more to it than just 
overlap, but that's like a rough idea of what this metric's about. So that's how they're perform, uh, reporting how well uh, you know it compares to Mr. Large and GPG-4 in multilingual. Uh, then you have accuracy. So this, I think, is you can see from the bottom that this is for RAG. So it's really question answering, and there's some kind of either a prompt that says, you know, is the, how accurate is this answer? And there's a rating or maybe, you know, or, and you have the reference of the gold answer, but some way there are plenty of ways of using LLMs to either evaluate answer accuracy or say you do things like have binary valued questions or, you know, F1 score, exact match, this kind of thinking there. So then we have uh, the tool use evaluations. So what they're probably showing here is how many uh, times it can correctly select the tool and execute it. So they have benchmarks that uh, you know, you come up with some kind of scenario where you need to use a calculator and are you or where you need to get the weather and are you able to correctly identify that you need to use the weather API and then, of course, use the JSON to format the request to the weather API. And then finally, probably the big thing that'll catch your eye if you're working with large language models is the cost continuing to go down. I don't want to dive too much into this, but, you know, you, you see it right there, $3 per 1,000, imp uh, 1 million input tokens and then $15 per 1 million output tokens. So really quickly before moving on to some more evaluations they're presenting, how can you access the model? Where is the model? So Command R Plus will be immediately available on Cohere's hosted API, and this is the API we'll be using in a second with the DSPy demo, but it's also supported in Azure and Oracle Cloud infrastructure. So let's dive into some more of the evaluations that they've done to present Command R Plus. So whereas I would say uh, sort of translation benchmarks, RAG tool use are sort of standard, they're certainly cutting edge. I don't mean to you know discredit it at all, but these next two evaluations they're presenting are really super novel, super new for presenting a new large language model. So on the left, we have human preference evaluation for summarization with citations. This is where a human is given two summaries with citations from Command R plus and Cloud3 Sonnet and the human rates, which one is better. So I love this kind of relative comparison. First of all, this is, I think, one of the most powerful approaches to LLM evaluation, especially when you cut out the human in the loop and you also have an LLM that takes in the output of two different LLMs to output it. And you could have things like say, you know, you have a, you control for the randomness a little bit by having 10 predictions or multiple LLMs. And there's all sorts of cool, exciting things around this kind of relative comparison wins sort of way, ELO rating of evaluating LLMs in a head-to-head -head way. So they're presenting a 74% uh, win rate over Cloud3 Sonnet and a 53% win rate over GPT-4 Turbo. Again, on this task of summarization with citations, and it looks like there's a little more detail on exactly how this is set up, but generally I think what you can expect is you were given, you know, maybe just coming back to our original example, say you're given 10 500 token chunk documents and then they're numbered and so say you know I'm, I'm sure you understand the concept of the citation where you just say seven at the end and so, something like that so anyways let's dive into the other uh, evaluation metric multi-step reasoning with search tools so this is super fascinating this multi-hop qa or the baleen systems for you know question decomposition and for me this is i think just kind of keeping up with the story of ai a little bit this auto gpt idea where the lm takes a task and you know makes a plan of here are the subtasks of this task and question answering has a very similar analog where uh, there's this analogy that's used in DSPy of uh, it's like how many stories is the castle that David Gregory inherited and you have to first say uh, like where was who was David Gregory and then what castle did he inherit it so this kind of idea of breaking up a question into the sub questions so we see that on these three different data sets hot pot QA maybe being the most commonly used academic benchmark and then also strategy QA and Bamboogle, I hope I'm saying that right. We see a benefit from command R plus and then, you know, competitive with GPT-4 Turbo, which, which is a super capable model, of course. But, you know, showing this kind of capability, reporting on this multi-step reasoning with search tools. Building on the, you know, the evaluation of tool use and sort of this uh, multi-step reasoning with search tools kind of thinking, we then have automating complex business workflows with tool use, where you sort of bring together these concepts of being able to use the tool to begin with, as well as to make a plan and kind of have that multi-step. So, so you kind of have a more complex task now, and now it's more of an LLM system that's processing, you know, a customer relationship management, to, you know, database doing tasks like recording tasks, maybe setting up activities or keeping it up to date with maybe information about people and, you know, things like this with the CRM. So they've built a system together with Langchain and they're reporting how well their model uh, performs on these different data sets for uh, tool use, say the Berkeley function calling with the Gorilla LLMs or uh, Tool Talk and 
having tool talk maybe has this kind of like conversational thing. I haven't d dove into the data set myself yet, but again, you can see the performance that they're reporting. So then they have some really interesting details about their multilingual support. And this is maybe one of my favorite nuggets from the from the release. I'm, I'm definitely super excited about the 128K and just the increased capabilities generally and the pricing is quite attractive, but this is, <laughs> this is also something that's really cool to take a look at. So there, you know, this is the performance on, again, these machine translation benchmarks. I'm personally more familiar with WMT. WMT has just like been the standard for machine translation for, you know, I would say early sequence to sequence, all, all that kind of stuff. So we're seeing, again, you know, on par with GPT-4, Mr. Lar, like in this, you know, outperforming, you know, this kind of category. But then we have this part. So this is a really interesting nugget, a really interesting sort of like thing to have optimized in the story of multilingual LLMs is that their tokenizer is doing a better job of tokenizing different languages such that you don't, so I'm not really caught up on the state of tokenizers, but back in the day when you had like byte pair encoding, you kind of break up a word like say tokenizer, the word, that word itself would be broken into like T-O-K and maybe like hyphen E-N, maybe like hyphen Izer, things like this, how you try to like break up these, these words. And by having a better vocabulary for you know all these different languages, you don't need to just kind of like break it up too much. You can have that kind of you know language structure. It's you know pretty meta, and I probably shouldn't have walked into the topic, but how uh, you know Cohere compares with how well it tokenizes and how many tokens it needs to encode Arabic text. So finally, one more note on availability and pricing, as well as a commitment to data privacy and security. Mm -hmm.